All right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it is day 13, episode 14 of 40 Days of 4VKM, and today's video is titled, one of my favorites, Juan O Saving the Republic. Isn't that a nice name? And it was released on 11-22-2020, which was a very big night in professional wrestling. So we'll get into that a little bit. But we start off the video uh, with a, nah, 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 a little Ted Nugent, a little stranglehold, right? Uh, which I was happy to see a couple years later recently, uh, actually at the Trump rally in Miami just a couple months ago, uh, where Roseanne Barr spoke and Juan O'Savin was with her, uh, prominently shown kind of behind the scenes there. Um, so you had Juan O'Savin at the rally. You also had Donald J. Trump Jr. He came out to Stranglehold, right? So that, I heard that. I saw that. I said, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, Trump Jr., Stranglehold, Juan O'Savin, Juan O'Savin, the Republic, Stranglehold. It was a nice little sink, as, as we like to call it, right? So uh, we're talking about the sham election, right? We talked about on the last episode how that was the last episode before the election, right? We were talking about The Rock, and I'm a day ahead as far as recording these uh but what's the big news today on january 23rd it is the rock was named to the board of directors of tko which is the parent company of wwe what were we talking about yesterday we were talking talking about the rock which that episode dropped the same day they named him right we also talked about erica nardini from barstool sports being named board of directors of WWE back in 2020. So it's just, again, another wonderful, beautiful little sink right there uh, with the rock in the news and board of directors and all that stuff going on. So back to this episode, right? So we're coming at you. We started off, uh, Juan O'Savin's talking about the election stuff that happened uh, from Trump Tower in Las Vegas, right? And he's talking about some of the elections that happened there in Clark County. You know, he really nails it down to uh, a couple counties in the United States, which really they were just able to flip these counties. I think it was six counties in total. I'm going to try to name them real quick. It was uh, Clark County, Nevada, Maricopa County, Arizona. It was, I want to say, Pittsburgh, PA. Um, er, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wayne County, Detroit, Michigan. And Georgia, Georgia, uh, Fulton County, Georgia, one of the counties in Georgia, right? So I did okay. I did all right there. So uh, really, it just took six counties, right? Everybody said, you know, oh, you can't steal an election. Not the way, not the way that the presidential election is set up, right? Well, you know, when you look at the facts, Joe Biden extremely underperformed this election, right? You would almost look at it and say how the hell did he pull it off right if you're if you're an unbiased person looking at it and you just look at the facts that he lost the critical states that you need to win in order to win he didn't win any of the what do they call bellwether counties right i think he won one out of 19 or something like that uh which that generally predicts who's gonna win uh the election so uh he didn't really uh clean up in the congressional seats right which kind of shows that a lot of the stuff was uh you know just filling in ballots for president real quick right because you don't have time to go fill out the rest right so just president 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 so uh we got juan he's talking about the election in clark county and uh there's a guy dan rodimer and i gotta be honest with you i don't remember dan rodimer uh, he must have been like a flash in the pan in WWE, but he was there, right? And he's talking to, uh, what's his face? Brian Kilmeade on Fox News. He's being interviewed, uh, because he's running as a candidate for Congress in Nevada. And, uh, he doesn't end up winning probably due to a lot of the shenanigans, right? But he was a former professional wrestler and he talks about how, you know, Vince McMahon would tell him to go out and cut a two hour promo and have an eight minute match. But he would actually go out there and cut an eight-hour, uh, eight-minute promo and have a two-minute match. And uh, he was a talker, right? So perfect politician, right? You know, big talker, you know, talk some politics, right? So you uh, kind of talk about that a little bit. We show you Linda McMahon. 
Linda McMahon, as I had mentioned in the past, she at this point, and she still is, is the chairwoman of uh, America First PAC, right? Probably the most predominant uh, Trump super PAC that there is out there, right? And it's been going for since she left the SBA, right? She left the SBA to go do this PAC, and she's been running it ever since, right? So uh, we show Linda McMahon, we show her displeasure with the... Uh, voting shenanigans that had gone on, right? You kind of see the dream team assemble all across the country. Uh, our our guy, Rudy Giuliani, right? Poor Rudy Giuliani. Uh, been dragged through the mug through this whole thing, right? Uh, Sidney Powell, General Flynn. You have Richard Grinnell on the ground, right? So you got all these big operators out there, and uh, they are, you know, getting the, the word out on what's going on they're fighting back right and you know what it sucked when this happened right but look what's happening now right you just had uh we're going to talk about the the voting machines right you just had it in georgia where somebody showed a federal judge how easy it was hack in, it was to hack into those machines right so it was able to do it with just a pen and change the vote totals right so um you know, it's all there. We just have to let the process roll out and uh, see what happens if we can fix 2020 before we get to 2024. I think that's still everybody's preferred outcome right there. So uh, we're talking about the election. We're talking about, uh, you know, some of the, the different things that are going on. Uh, four seasons, total landscaping, right? That's one of my favorites. Uh, you know, remember the tweet, you know, Trump say, well, we're going to be at the Four Seasons, right? And everybody thought it was the hotel and then it was the landscaping place, right? But the weird part about the landscaping place that people point out, if you look at where Rudy Giuliani was standing with the podium and he has the signs up behind him, right? You have uh, a camera, a security camera right above there, right? And by the looks of it, that security camera was kind of pointing across the street. And what was across the street? It was a uh, uh, cremation center, right? A crematoria. I don't know what they call those things, right? But a uh, place where they burn people, right? So uh, very interesting, right? Why do they kind of pick this place? There has to be some extra meaning to it, right? Um, you have that place across the street. So I think they're kind of tell us that, you know, maybe burning evidence, destroying evidence, and we have it all at the end of the day. Or maybe not. Maybe it was just a booking error, and that was the only four seasons and venue that they had available that day as well. So, uh, you know, there's a lot going on with this election, multiple ways uh, as far as how it was cooked, right? Uh, we all know about the mail-in stuff, right? If you didn't see 2,000 Mules, I highly recommend it, uh, regardless of your opinion of Dinesh D'Souza. That kind of speaks for itself, though. And if you just want to be able to explain how it happened with the mail-in votes and the drop boxes and all that other stuff, and keep in mind, you only have to do six counties, right? And I think those uh, that documentary focused on those six counties and really just tracked out how they dropped all the ballots off and used cell phone data to kind of really prove it all. And um, there's not a good explanation anybody could give me on why uh, somebody would need to go visit all the drop boxes in town, you know, almost like a paper route uh, in the middle of the night, you know, and when you look at the security footage and you see the gloves and, you know, people taking gloves off before they put the ballots in the box. I mean, it's sus. It's super, super duper sus. And uh, so highly recommend you guys check that film out so you can have a better understanding of uh, what was going on there. So, um, Social media censor censorship is another thing Juan's talking about in the video. You have Twitter at the time. Remember there, every time Trump says, like, they're stealing it, they're stealing it, they put a little disclaimer underneath them, right? Remember they started doing it? It was community notes before community notes. And they'd say, no, this election was fair, the fairest in history, right? Um, you know, so, and then they end up blocking him, suspending him. Uh, ultimately in January, uh, after January 6th. But, you know, social media was in on it. Bezos was throwing money at it. Zuckerberg, think of how much money he spent on it, right? So you had all these guys uh, just unloading. Big tech was totally against President Trump. And, 
you know, they all colluded together to kind of make sure they got the outcome that they wanted, right? And we're not even talking about the fake news, right? So uh, we jump ahead, and this is kind of the first time I think you hear my voice in these videos. Uh, we go back to 2018 in the midterm elections, right? And you remember that midterm elections? Who was running? You had Ron DeSantis versus Andrew Gillum, bad Andrew. You have uh, Stacey Abrams versus uh, Brian Kemp in Georgia. And you have Beto versus Ted Cruz in Texas, right? And remember, the media was in love with all these people and talking about, oh, you know, blue wave, blue wave, right? And it just didn't make sense, especially in Florida where I'm at. You know, every poll that I saw had Gillum winning. It didn't really line up with how people thought, right? Ron DeSantis was only ahead in one or two polls, I want to say, right? So, uh, you know, that was really bugging me around that time. Now, the date that uh, you see me pop up, I show up on InfoWars, right? So only time I was ever on InfoWars, interviewed or, you know, asking Alex Jones questions. And we had a little dialogue there between the two of us. And, you know, I'm talking about the fake polls, right? So I kind of mentioned the fact that, you know, I'm here in Florida and there's only been one poll that has Ron DeSantis up. But obviously, this guy is the favorite in Florida especially the way Florida just voted for Donald Trump, right? So uh, none of it really made sense. You know, and then ultimately what ended up happening, you had Abrams lost, Beto lost, and um, Andrew Gillum lost, thank God. So, you know, it's interesting to say the least. A funny thing about that day that I called into InfoWars is I actually had started the morning in Orlando. I woke up in Orlando. I was out there for work. And uh, I had an early day. I had to go uh, visit one place and then head home, you know, from Orlando back to South Florida, usually about three, three and a half hour drive. And since I had some extra time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go stop at Kennedy Space Center and go have some lunch, right? And uh, so I went there. They don't have much lunch spots there. So I think I got like a pretzel and a hot dog or something like that. But uh, I just kind of got to take the scene in a little bit. You know, they have this monument of JFK there where he has this the speech where he's talking about going to the moon, right? So I took a picture of that. And, uh, you know, it's just a nice little afternoon, right? And then I get in the car. I'm listening to InfoWars at the time. And, uh, you know, he says that he's going to take first-time callers, right? So I had never called him before. So I figured I can, uh, I can give it a shot, right? So... He has the app at the time before they banned it from the Apple store. And uh, so I call in through the app. And I, I got through, right? And he puts me on hold. Uh, I'm on hold for practically the entire ride from from Orlando to South Florida. And then I'm the last caller picked, right? And he goes, hmm, who are we going to pick, right? You can see him kind of make the decision. He goes, hmm, Andrew, you're up next, right? So super excited. He calls me. And this is my shot, right? I'm going to ask my question. And I kind of drop it. I'm like, you know, I'm not buying everything that the media is selling us right now about these polls, right? And he talks about it a little bit. Uh, watch his hand gestures, though, right? He just did that video he just released talking about Q. You know, I ask him that question. Look at his hand gestures. He he keeps doing this for the circle. And then with his pen, he goes, mm, mm, mm. so it's almost like he's doing a Q. Maybe it's just my imagination, but you guys can take a look at it for yourself. So the bummer part about all this is that I didn't really get a chance to rebuttal, right? Uh, you know, he asked the question, or I asked the question. He kind of gave his answer to it. We're talking about the fake polls, another way that they kind of try to cook the vote, right? And um, he has to go to the next caller, which was... Ted Nugent, right? What are we listening to? Stranglehold, right? So that's kind of part of it. But Nick No, who we talked about from the last video, uh, I think I had showed him Gridiron Gang 2 on X, and he just replied back with Ted Nugent Stranglehold. So it was the inspiration for this video to kind of use that song. And then what are the odds Ted Nugent comes on after me there uh, on InfoWars, right? So nice little sync, we like to call him, right? A little sync. Uh, so yeah, so it was fun. So, you know, that's really, uh, the election. Uh, we kind of cover all of the stuff 
that kind of led up to the result. I forgot to mention Biden, right? So, you know, the cherry on top is Joe Biden giving his little speech, right? And, uh, you know, if you remember, he had text Joe to 30330, I think it was, right? And if you divide 2020, you take 2020 and divide it by 30330, you get 0666. Wow, what are the odds of that, right? Kind of in your face, right? So, you know, those are Joe Biden's numbers right there. Uh, but as I'm showing you that, the guy's talking and he goes, we've put together perhaps the greatest voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. He says it, right? This is an edited clip. He says it. He says it, right? And you, a lot of people could say, oh, well, he's old and stupid, so he just made a mistake. I don't know how you make a mistake like that uh, and not catch yourself and correct yourself, right? I mean, he, he said we put together the greatest voter fraud organization in the history of the United States. So, I mean, that tells you everything you need to know right there. So, you know, that's kind of about the election. Um, and then we segue into 1122, right? So we all know what happened 1122, 1963. JFK was shot in Dallas. Uh, you know, the world was watching at the time as the world turns. That was the television program that was on that got interrupted uh, by all the news networks, right? And Walter Cronkite, you see the famous Walter Cronkite scene where he, you know, makes the announcement that President Kennedy has died. And a very sad day in American history, for sure. And a day that lives in infamy, uh, of course. So, what what else happened on 11-22? Um, you know, just go 27 years later. 27 years later is 11-22-1990. Now, remember we talked about Jamacha earlier in earlier videos. 27 is... JFK. So 27 years later, on 11-22, probably the most important character in the history of WWE debuted, and it was The Undertaker. So The Undertaker debuts on 11-22. He's the dead man walking, right? That's that's kind of what they, they call him. He's The Undertaker, right? And you'll see in future videos, there's a lot of similarities there between him and JFK. I talked about in a previous video how he had left after the end of the era match and then he comes back. And when he comes back, he's the American badass, right? Um, so I show this clip from that return and it's uh, these creepy girls, right? Talking about, uh, I pray my soul is mine to keep, right? And as I'm showing all that, I'm showing all of those deep state presidents after JFK that kind of uh, kept things under wraps and kept things, uh, you know, kept the conspiracy going, uh, kept the truth from all of us, right, at the end of the day. Now, you can argue some of them were good. Um, you know, I'm not going to say everybody was bad there, but at the end of the day, nobody really got to the truth, right? And uh, we end that little scene with the Tiffany blue box being handed to uh, Michelle. And remember, the, uh, if you pay attention closely to that phrase, uh, the last thing you hear is, he's here, right? So he's here. And then you we cut to the guy, the faceless man. Actually, this is a different scene where he's wearing a mask uh, in the helicopter, Marine One. He's here. So you have uh, the Undertaker. Uh, you, at the same time during the election, you have Ron Watkins. Remember him? Code Monkey, CM, right? He's uh, making the rounds, uh, talking to uh, Chanel Ryan. Remember her? What happened to her? Um, you know, he's talking to her on uh, News Maps or one of those networks, and uh, he's talking about how easy it is to hack into the machines, right? Um, which, well, again, just recently was proven in a Georgia court right there. So, just got to have patience, guys. Just got to have patience. And, you know, 
Hopefully it all works out. If not, go out and vote on 11-5-2024. You got it anyway, right? But if it happens, that is. So, um, so you have him talking about that. It's interesting to me as he's in that skit, he's wearing like a black Undertaker hat, right? Undertaker used to wear these, you know, big bucket hats. I don't know what the hell you call them, right? But uh, Ron Watkins is wearing that hat as well. So thought that was pretty cool. But going back to The Undertaker in 1122, that's not the only 1122 associated with The Undertaker's career. So Undertaker debuted at the Survivor Series in 1990, 1122. And 30 years later in WWE, he would come, he would retire on 1122. And remember in the last episode, I was telling you about the Tesla Towers and how they were, uh, I showed them during the Elias concert, right? And Elias is talking about time and space. And uh, we're talking about Tesla and all that stuff, right? So I show the Tesla Towers. And I show a uh, model Tesla Tower that they had in Texas somewhere. So we show the Tesla Towers in that video. And then that was when? 10, 3, uh, 10 30, 20, 20? This is 11.22, right? Um, on 11.22, we have The Undertaker retire, and he comes out and retire. It, while As he's walking to the ring, you have these two Tesla towers that are in the entranceway. And you've never seen them before in uh, any of his entrances or whatnot. His entrance on the way to the ring is like a bunch of electricity and like lightning bolts, but the lightning bolts are kind of creating a signal. It looks like one of those Tesla lamps, you know, those things that you put your hand in the electricity, you know, um, and it's even making those noises, right? So you have these Tesla uh, towers in the Undertaker's entrance at WrestleMania uh, at his retirement 1122 right and when I think about that it's almost like you know again project looking like, like how do they know this stuff how do they know what to put you know in wrestling in movies whatever the case be uh it's very very interesting to say the least so uh to wrap things up with this one you know we see after Trump loses the election supposedly uh, he makes some moves, right? He uh, fires the defense secretary, Mark Asper, I think it was, right? Fires him, right? Ronald Savings telling the story. He says it in Vince McMahon's voice. He goes, you're fired. Um, so he gets fired. Christopher Miller gets brought in. I believe Christopher Miller was over uh, cybersecurity. There's something along the lines of that, right? Uh, so he gets moved in. And then you have a couple promotions. You have Cash Patel. Uh, he gets put into a prominent position. You have uh, a gentleman, Anthony Tata. He gets promoted. And then you have Ezra Cohen Watnick, uh, who gets uh, promoted within the Defense Department, right? And it's very interesting because these are all last minute moves that Trump's putting in place before he leaves, right? So if he's supposedly leaving office, but he's making all these personnel moves, right? Who knows what they were doing and setting up and uh, taking care of, right? Now, this is still 11-22. We're still in 2020. We're days, you know, weeks still away from January 6th. But I'll show you a couple WWE uh, pay-per-view logos, right? That they had. And actually, these, these pay-per-views always happened in the UK, right? So there's two. WWE Rebellion and WWE Insurrection. You know, maybe there's an insurrection. I had put that in at that point because, you know, we were talking about the Insurrection Act. Is Trump going to put it? Is Trump going to issue the Insurrection Act to kind of take care of all of this? That was kind of the theory at the time. Who knew all those weeks later, you know, they'd be talking about an insurrection, whether it was Fed generated or whatever we want to say. Um, you know, that's the word that they use, right? And that's the word that they're trying to use. And the crime that they're trying to label on Trump 
to, to try to get him to prevent him from being on the ballot in 2024. So we got to see what the Supreme Court does about that. We, we did the ACB video the other day. That didn't really work out on the border. Does she do the same thing with, with when it comes to Trump on the 2024 ballot with those cases for Colorado and Maine going up there? Let's see what happens, right? Let's see what happens. So, uh, so it's very interesting at the end of the day, 1122. It was the start of Undertaker. It was the end of Undertaker. Um, and that's not the only person, right? VK, our guy VK, Vincent, Vincent Kennedy, right on X, uh, Vincent Crypt 46. He, uh, he debuted on 1122. And he left on 1122 as well, right? So one of the last tweets that he reshared was me being like, wow, you and Undertaker both showed up on 1122 and left on 1122. So it's kind of fun. Now, Undertaker did come back after 1122. He's made some appearances since then. Uh, so he wasn't gone forever. So who knows? Maybe VK not gone forever too. So that's about it for this episode. Uh, the next one we're going to be talking about is uh, War on Christmas, which is a fun one. It came out on Christmas Day 2020. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy that. But make sure you guys check out this video, Juan O Saving the Republic for VKM. Find it on Rumble. Link is below here. Don't forget to subscribe to the 4VKM podcast channel. We're launching that on 2-21-2024. Uh, so very big day that will be. Very excited. And uh, check it all out. 4VKM.com. You can see all the other episodes. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the show.